Hello and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. We are currently in Act 2 and we're finishing up Yuri tonight and then we will uh, then we'll do Natsuki and then all the extra content. So stick around for a few more episodes. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you could do me a huge favor, conspire with actually conspire with no one if you could just like eviscerate the like button chop its guts up cook them and then serve them to the subscribe button that would be fantastic and be sure to ring the bell for dinner ding ding anyway um so yeah let's get started i hope everyone had a wonderful day remember every day we wake up is a new victory all right That thing, yeah, that's that's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Cabot. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at the desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before, and something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I'd already decided that there's no way that you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah. <sighs> Cabot, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. Oh my. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person, and I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything's a little bit brighter with you around, and... Ah, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man... Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. N no I haven't. Oh jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Hmm? Jeez. Whatever's going on in your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But, I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you sacredly hated me or something like that. Ha <laughs> ha! No, not at all. I don't hate you. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Aw, budding romance. <laughs> I don't hate you. Well, I don't hate you either. <laughs> Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial now. Hey! Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not. <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Ah, uh, 
Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. <laughs> don't, give, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still really not good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. <laughs> Aw, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Cabot. Monica smiles sweetly as she farts, blowing her skirt up yet again. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, uh, best of luck. Oh, thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki's already run off into the closet. It's time to come out of the closet, Natsuki. Cabot, um, since your compliments put me in such a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. Planned on it anyway. <laughs> okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Ah, uh, I'm being a little forceful again, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Brrr, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. How does that contrast her speaking, like, at all? <laughs> okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, might as well walk with you. That, that's okay. You stay here. I won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? Uh, no, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up. I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale, like someone sucking in the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach around the I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Gah! I don't read that fast. But, uh... Yeah! So that happened. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Cabot, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Celsius. 
because only America is heathens with Fahrenheit. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? Hoo-hoo. In that case, you'll only be more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out, it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Cabot. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Cabot, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my, uh, my... Your posture, right? Not those giant hooters? Always hunched over like that while reading. Goodness gracious, what's wrong with you? Oh, yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. They're over 18. Well, they are 18, because they're in high school, but still. Oh, I can't see too well. Huh? Yuri slides closer until her shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. You little pervert! Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Or maybe she has, and she's doing it on purpose. She wears her intense reading expression, I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I've finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble, fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Hmm? You sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? You sure? Of course. Okay. Uh, Yuri holds the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But, as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case... Yuri's already focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural, but it means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Hmm? Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just... Yuri looks at me to confirm... What just happened? Um, Cabot. Sorry. Guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I, I can't... Cabot. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Oh, that's different. Cabot. My heart won't stop pounding, Cabot. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Cabot? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Oh, dear. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Oh, hi. Uh, 
Um. What's going on with your eye there? Did you get socked in the face? Because it's not over here, but it's over there. Um. Um. It's time to share poems. Well, that was fun. Uh, Cabot, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend that much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be, like, a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault, though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. <laughs> While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head. And I know how to treat my club members. Monica, you're kind of turning into a bitch, aren't you? But anyway... You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save. Whoa, whoa, this is different. The colors, they won't bright. Flushing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and cough, meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Damn, okay. Delete her? Uh, that's different. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um. Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, uh, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Let's go with Natsuki. Yeah, just as I thought. Habit, come on. I'm not stupid. I know how much time you've been spending with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to improve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Why are you even in this club, Cabot? Honestly. I thought getting a new member would help everyone get more involved together, not exclude each other even more. This is such a stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today, and I really don't feel like talking right now. Please go away. Okie dokie, artichokey. I've been waiting for this. Let me see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Cabot, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Ah... Uh, that makes me so happy. It's amazing to feel like I'm valued, Cabot. Everything you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Cabot? I'm not being weird, right? I've, I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed, but right now, I just want you to read my poem too, okay? Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolted, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming 
with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time, de devouring snakes with human eyes. What? A thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God. Okay. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. F 40. That says 40, not 40. 40 gears and a ticking clock. A uh, clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time devouring prayer connecting to a sky of farty gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolthead, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Someone's losing it? Okay. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your patent. Ah, uh, that is a, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I um, just really like the way it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure. Today I cut my skin open for the first time. It was exhilarating. I think I understand how blank feels now. I'm supposed to be the responsible one, though. I don't think I'll be doing it again unless I decide to kill myself. I've left a memento of the occasion below. Um. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So if everyone comes sit at the front of the room. Is that the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Oh, don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Cabot joined and we started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We only still have four members. The festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the th same feelings that brought you here in the first place. The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can do can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Cabot? Um, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Cabot to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? You never even talked until Cabot joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Cabot isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. So, sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine just like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Cabot want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation, um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Cabot, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. 
it's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just, I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't many other places like that for me. And I know, and now Monica wants to take it away. She's not taking anything away. No, Cabot, it's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going help. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Jesus Christ. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Cabot? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. Oh, you're... You got a little something coming out of your eyeball there. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So, if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Hmm? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president, and also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever, okay? Me too. Yeah, let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Alright. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Cabot? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat for a little bit with Cabot before we leave, just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. <sighs> Things have been a little bit hectic lately, haven't they? Cabot, I just want to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like I'm kind of responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything, and Yuri being a little bit, uh, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. Let's, uh, wait, not yet! No, stop it! <laughs> Interesting. Hi, Cabot. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. <sighs> Monica, I told you not to. Ugh. Is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Me? No, nothing. Is it really that bad? See, it is something. Well, get over it. It's not gotten anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. Anyway, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just felt like I needed to bring it up. It's not like I really care or anything. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Well, Cabot just walked in too. 
Were you practicing piano again? Yeah! <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Motivates me to work hard for the festival and, uh... Right. I forgot. Um, about that, Natsuki. We were all talking yesterday and, well, we decided we would like to support the festival as well. However, I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So as long as we're all working together, this club will never become something we don't want. Also, if you help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new manga. <laughs> Sorry, that last part was really funny. Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know. So I'm going to help too and make sure it's done right. Oh, thank goodness. Isn't that great, Monica? Uh, Monica? Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. <laughs> anyway, Cabot, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Uh, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Cabot is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? I suppose... I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Um, thank you. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Um... Ah! Um... Wait, how did I? Sorry, I just had a really weird deja vu. This hasn't happened before or anything, right? My head has been so fuzzy lately. I hope it hasn't really been showing or anything. I would hate for you to think I'm weird just after we started spending time together. I mean... Everyone has a few unusual things about them, but expressing those things so soon after meeting someone is usually seen as inappropriate or unlikable. At least that's what I've discovered. When I was a bit younger, I think I would come on really strongly and get a little too intense. It made people not want to be around me. So I started hating those things about myself. My obsession with certain hobbies, and the way I can't control myself when I get too excited about something. So, I eventually stopped trying to talk to people. If nobody could ever like me for the things that matter most to me. It's just e easier if I close myself off. But recently something's been wrong. I don't know what it is. But every time we come to the club, my heart starts to go crazy. Like it's going to rip out of my chest. It overwhelms me with energy and emotions that I can't let out. It's been making me do weird things. I don't know why it's happening. Cabot, is it just me or has Monica been acting a little off lately? She's always been a sweetheart ever since I joined the club. But recently I've been feeling like something sh sharp whenever she's around. I'm not crazy, right? Please tell me I'm not crazy. I couldn't say anything before because she's always listening. But finally we're alone. Can we just stay here for a while? Yeah. Um, I just want to stay here. Just the two of us. We can stay here until the club ends. And then we'll have the club room all to ourselves. Nobody to interfere with our reading time. Nobody to make me feel like stabbing myself in the throat. Oh. Oh! Oh, that's weird. That's weird. If you look close, you can see Monica. Right there. Right. I see an eyeball. And her little bow. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Just a joke. I do like knives, though. It sounds strange, but you wouldn't understand if you've never seen how beautiful they can be. Oh, now Monica is getting... Yep. I have an idea. Why don't you come to my house sometime? I can show you my collection. I've gotten them from all various artisans. I made sure to give them all their fair share of use. I don't want them to get lonely or anything. Nobody deserves to be lonely. Nobody! 
And that's why I'm so happy you joined the Literature Club, Cabot. Now, we don't need to be lonely anymore, because we have each other. Every day. That's all we need. You know what? Let's quit the Literature Club. There's no need for us to be around Monica's slimy tongue anymore. Not to mention the other pathetic child. We can walk home together every day after school. And read together. Eat together. Sleep together. Doesn't that sound perfect? It's everything you could ever want. Isn't that why you joined the club in the first place? It's almost like it was fate. Fate that we would meet each other. And now we get the happy ending that I've patiently waited years for. Will you do that with me, Cabot? We'll bring the gonna act like that never happened. Okie dokie. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you, Cabot. Okay. Ugh, I'm not going to read another one of your Yuri suck-up poems, but I'm still gonna make you read mine. There's a reason. I really wish I didn't have to do this, but unfortunately I don't have much of a choice. Just read it carefully, okay? Then you can go away. I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri's been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now, I don't care. I just feel so helpless, so please see if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to, just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and I know that's why I'm, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, Cabot? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. You just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica, just Monica, just Monica, just Monica, just Monica. Okay. Well, that happened. Why? Okay. Yuri. There we go. Okay, there just hasn't been enough light. Finally. <laughs> Yuri holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. I love it. I love everything about it. Cabot, I want you to take this home. Will you let me keep- I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it? Please. Sure, I don't care. <laughs> You're too nice to be Cabot. I've never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not, not really, but I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Yuri holds my poem to her chest. I'm gonna take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. I'll give myself paper cuts so your skin oil enters my bloodstream. <laughs> okay, Jesus. You can have my poem too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really gonna wanna keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it. Um... I see blood, and is that urine right there? Um, okay. Do you like it? I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about... <laughs> 
<laughs> More importantly, I've endowed it with my scent. Oh no, you didn't do the vabbing thing, did you? See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? That, that's about how I feel on the inside, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm gonna vomit. Yeah, me too. A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost, looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon my huge en a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Oh, dear. Okay, everyone. It's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ugh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, I was thinking, I want to make cupcakes! Yeah, that. Glad we're on the same page. Yuri, you can... Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want, as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I, I know that. I already know what I'd like to do. We can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere for the occasion. So I'm going to make decorations and set up some nice mood lighting. There, see? That's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. Mm -hmm. What about Cabot? Cabot's gonna help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is, labor task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too. What, your cupcakes, please. Ugh, like you would fucking know. All you care about now is dragging Cabot around with you and your stupid books. You and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Cabot decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are, Monica. Just let Cabot make the choice, okay? Ugh, okay, fine. Fine. Jeez. Cabot, I know how you fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... Natsuki, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. Ah, you shut your mouth! For God's sake. This is never gonna end. Just make the choice, okay? Ah! Yay, you picked me. We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all this work and then asking, taking Cabot for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable. <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Cabot away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial for your mental health. Uh, Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See? Was that very hard? All I wanted to do is spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki out the door. Hey, Cabot. Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Ugh. That's fun. Finally. Finally. This is all I really wanted. Okay, but there's no... Okay. You know what I forgot to do? So this is where we're going to end it because I don't want to move on to the next step before doing Natsuki. 
So. That's where we're gonna leave it. That was fun. That was, holy shit. All right, so. Next episode, we are going to, well, probably next two episodes, we're gonna do uh, Natsuki, and then we will move on to the rest of it. So thank you very much for joining me, guys, and I will catch you next time. Remember, you are important, you are loved, you and your feelings are valid. I will catch you next time. Have a good whatever. Bye-bye!